All right. Uh, all right. Uh, so you're in the U.S. right now. When will you be heading over for Wrestle Kingdom? I leave on the first. Uh, arrive on the second. Okay. What's the uh, What's that time adjustment like for you? Does it get Does it get easier with each trip? It gets easier with each trip. I'm actually taking my wife for me that, uh, with me this time, and uh, and uh, she's going to have a hard time. But uh, you know, I've kind of warned her and stuff like that, so it should be fun. Yeah, and, and uh, with your with your wrestling style, you know, it just seems like such a perfect fit with you in New Japan. And I was curious if were you a fan of New Japan growing up? Uh, well, if you say growing up, and you mean by like uh, in my. 20s uh i'd say yes uh obviously we you know you didn't, you didn't get to really watch new japan unless you tape traded you know right um and so when i go to indie shows uh i've run to you know guys who were tape trading and that's how uh i got you know to see new japan for wrestling but the crazy thing is is i only mostly saw the the juniors i didn't really get to see a lot of the the heavyweights other than the guys who were mega stars like you know muda uh guys like that you know yeah. Were you a wrestling fan growing up? I, I, you know, I watched it. I enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, my brothers, you know, I had three other brothers. None of them really seemed to care uh, about it, but I liked it. And when did you uh, decide to get into the business? Well, like what, what, uh, what made you uh, move in that direction? Well, I mean, it was so hot at the time, you know, and, you know, I remember in college, I was watching it. Of course, everybody was in 98, you know. Mm-hmm. Everybody's watching it and just came, became a bigger fan. And then, um, you know, it was just one of those things. That I thought, well, how I could do that? But, you know, when will I ever find the opportunity to go train at the power plant or try to see if I can make it there? Uh, but I had some friends uh, who found a place about 30 minutes from a house. And it was called NCW, a National Championship Wrestling, a small hole in the wall. And... And I went there and took a couple bumps, and I was like, I can do this. And then later it changed into um, uh, NWA Wildside, and so that's where I started. Yeah, and uh, during that time, so were you a, a WCW fan or a, a WWF fan at that time? Well, you know, I'm from the South, so I was a, <laughs> uh, obviously a, a WCW fan, but, uh, you know, as it you know went on, I obviously, how could you not be a WWE uh e fan at the time right uh, who who were some of your uh early influences uh when you were watching uh at that time yeah i mean i can't say that there was a lot of guys that you know that i was like oh i want to be just like that guy you know mm-hmm. there was never one guy i want to be just like but there's little there's things that i took from the other guys that i really liked or uh like um uh lance storm i like the fact that he was such a great athlete you know um, Kidman, you know, uh, the shooting star was, uh, you know, I, I like that, but, you know, then, um, you know, there's a couple other guys, uh, when, once I got into wrestling, like Muda and Liger had an influence in me. Right. And, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, you, you know, starting off and then you start wrestling in 1998, right? Uh, 99. 99. So that was like probably the healthiest year for pro wrestling in the modern area. And by the time you uh, signed with WCW, the, the landscape had completely changed. Um, what were those last months in WCW like? Great. I mean, I didn't know any better. So uh, I just thought everything is the way it should be. And, it, you know, for me, it was great. I didn't like if, if something bad stuff was going on or didn't seem right. I wouldn't know because, it was, you know, just got there. Yeah, what was your reaction when you found out about uh, WWE buying them out? Well, first of all, you know, I, you, people talked about WCW going under, under uh, going out of business. I was like, there's no way it's WCW. Right. You know, it's never going to go out of business. They've made too much money. It's too popular. It'll never. Well, I was wrong. Um, uh, and then when WWE bought it, I'm like, oh my god, there's still hope. Mm-hmm. You know, and then later I get the call that, that I wasn't picked up in the WCW, uh, I guess, crossover. Uh, my contract wasn't picked up. Yeah. And you did have the uh, the WWE tryouts. Uh, how, did, how did that come about? Uh, I had uh, a dark match uh, with – actually, it wasn't a dark match at all. I think it was on Jacked or something like that with Hurricane Helms. Him and I had a great match, you, mm-hmm. you know. He's awesome. So uh, then I went and had another match with him and, and did pretty good on that. And they invited me to a camp. And I learned a lot of great things. 
Yeah. And then you also uh, signed with TNA. Uh, when you heard about the weekly pay-per-view concept, uh, did you think that was something that would work? Not really. Um, honestly, when I signed with them, um, I just treated it like another indie because basically it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just another indie. Uh, and, and in fact, I still did indies on the weekends, you know, while while wrestling for TNA in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And your name, you know, having been on their first pay per view, you, you're kind of synonymous with TNA having been been there for so long, uh, for twelve years. Uh, and during that time, there were a lot of creative changes, regime changes, et cetera. Um, what did you think was the best time for that company while you were there? I think that the best time was probably around 2005 to 2008. I think there were some great things happened there. Yeah. You know, there was some really, I mean, it was really popular, mm -hmm. uh, in, in at least growing, you know. Right. And when did you feel like things started kind of going off the rails a little bit? Uh, probably around I think 2009, you know, into 10, it started going in a direction I didn't really understand, and and just not trusting the people that got him to the ball game. Like, um, you know, I, I felt like there were some guys that really worked hard to make TNA what it is, and then they just lost faith in, faith in those guys. I don't know if they wanted to grow too quick. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was what's going on, uh, and they felt like they needed bigger stars in their eyes. So I, I don't know. Uh, I think that was for me, it was probably when I seen something going on that shouldn't be. Right. And what ultimately factored into your decision, decision to leave? Was it, uh, was it mostly financial, just not getting a good enough deal or, or was there more to it? Uh, well, well, you know, it was obviously it was weird at that time. Um, mm -hmm. and financial has a lot to do with it. Um, this is what I do for a living. So, uh, you know, it's not about being greedy. It's about hopefully one day being able to retire from a business that I loved and gave everything I had to. Um, and so it was ultimately, you know, you know, I had to make a decision soon and I just didn't feel like that you, you, you don't punish a guy for working hard and doing his best. You reward him and, and that's not the direction that TNA was going at that time. So, you know, I thought it was a good time to, to leave. Yeah. Did you get the feeling that they expected you to stay? Cause it was pretty, uh, pretty bizarre that the end of the run, uh, the end of your run, they had you featured as a, as their top star. Yeah, I, I I don't know if uh, if they gave me the belt, so they assumed that I'd stay because I had it, or you know, I'm not really sure why they would do that. Because I kept asking myself, well, they're, surely they're going to give me the deal that I want because they're just giving me all the steam. Why would they do that? Um, of course, I was wrong, and you know, it was really weird the way that I went out. But I, I'm not mad about the way it happened. You know, I, I was pushed really hard. Mm -hmm. And then since then, uh, with New Japan, with ROH, a lot of fans feeling you're probably having your best, uh, probably the best years of your career uh, in the ring. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you, you, you won that, uh, I think it was the FSM or uh, that magazine that named you their top wrestler of the year. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Fighting Spirit Magazine. Yes, yeah. Fighting Spirit Magazine. Um, what was it rejuvenating uh, leaving TNA or is it pretty much, are you, are you still kind of working the same style and you're just, just, bigger angles and, and better storylines or, or what do you think that it, it is? I, I honestly believe that it's understanding so much about what really makes and goes into a great match. It isn't the moves and, you know, don't get me wrong. There's great things about these moves and stuff like that, but it's the story that you tell, but, but, uh, you know, you may not have much of a, um, a story going into it, but there's still a story to tell in the match. And I think I've really grasped hold of, of what that is. Uh, and, and not that I've perfected it, but man, I, I feel pretty good, you know, getting in the ring and, and really telling a great story. I feel like I can do that pretty well now. And, and it's the little things that mean the most. It's, it's not the, the big moves. It's the little things in between that people can say, you know, like, well, you know, wow, that was a great match. Well, what was so great about it? Ah, you just got to watch it. Like, you just can't. They can't fully put their finger on it. What it was that made it such a great match? A great match. But I can tell you, it was probably the little things in it that it, that made it a great match. Yeah, and, and those little things is that different in the U.S. Or in in Japan? Like, do you have to tweak it uh, because the crowds are different, or is not it at all? Not at all. I am completely the same wrestler as I am in Japan as I am in the states. Yeah. 
And you're also the first American to hold the IWGP championship in 11 years uh, since Brock Lesnar won it in 2005. Uh, how does it feel uh, having that honor? Uh, it, you know, it's pretty awesome. I mean, to hold a belt that, you know, for a company that I, that I loved watching, for me, that's something special. So it was, it was a big deal to me. You know, it may, have, may have not have been to anybody else. I don't know. But for me, not only to hold it once but twice, I, I, that's pretty awesome. Um, it just goes to show what a great company that New Japan is, is that they're not afraid to put it on someone uh, who can you know, hopefully put butts in the seats. Um, and I had some great matches being that heavyweight champion, and, and I've had great matches without the belt. So it's a, it's a big accomplishment for me. Yeah. And there's been a lot of uh, talk about your back, obviously. Uh, how, how are you feeling heading into the event? Uh, I feel great, man. Uh, I literally uh, have no problems whatsoever. It's, you know, it was just one of those little bumps, I guess, in the road. And I got over it and I'm ready to rock. Is there a, um, your schedule now, It's it, do you consider it lighter than when you were with TNA? Because now you're doing the independent, you're also going back and forth uh, to Japan. Uh, would you say it's the same or harder or easier or, or just different? I would say it's harder. Um, there's, you know, when you're with uh, a certain company and it doesn't matter who it is, then you know the guys really well and you know what to do. It's, it's, just, it's just a lot easier to go through this, you know, match and put it together. And, you know, you, you kind of almost prepare for it in your in your head. But when you're wrestling different guys every weekend, you really have to have your thinking cap on. And you don't always know exactly the moves that they do, so you got to work together and, and figure this thing out to make it a great match. Um, so I think that I'm wrestling more now mm -hmm. than, I, than I did for TNA. Yeah, and, uh, and you're challenging for the Intercontinental Championship. Unlike uh, the U.S., that's a, it's a huge deal over in Japan, and, and part of that reason is, is Shinsuke Nakamura really, uh, really making that belt into a huge deal. Uh, he's... I've been uh, absolutely like he he's uh, to me he has made that belt just as important as the IWGB heavyweight title mm -hmm. um I, you know he's definitely respected over there and people love him so he has really done well in making that belt uh you know very important yeah and how big would that be for you for you to win that title that'd be huge i mean another belt uh is never a bad thing uh and to never have helped a intercontinental title would it'd be cool man i'm not gonna lie to you yeah and uh a lot of fans considering this a dream match you you and nakamura uh you've never wrestled him right you just you just teamed with him once i wrestled against him in a tag match uh we've done that twice now never uh in a singles match so that's what makes this one so special is that you know uh new japan was smart enough to see this uh a year, almost two years, you know, uh, in the making, you know, this thing's, you know, it's, it's brilliant to me. It's brilliantly done, you yeah. know, for two guys and to go on, who's never wrestled each other on the biggest show of the year. Yeah. And you've also been having a great run with ROH. Um, what was your reaction to destination America dropping them last month? Uh, you know what? Uh, it didn't say, it didn't seem to me that destination America was doing really that much with it anyway so um, I don't think it was that big a blow to Ring of Honor when they have television elsewhere anyway so I don't think it was that big of a deal to be honest with you I didn't really think anything of it yeah and I, I, I know you always get asked about NXT and WWE um, is the WWE schedule something that that even interests you at this point in your of your career because I know you've said in the past that you want to retire by by 42 which would be four years so is that something that um yeah, that you that you find it attractive. Well, I mean, uh, I think the the first thing you got to find out, you know, that it looks attractive to me, is, you know, am I going to be able to support my family? Am I going to be, you know, who knows? So um, I'm going to do what's best for them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know I, people get tired of saying of me saying that, but that's that's the reality that I live in. Um, I do love to wrestle. That's what I do. I, I get to do it for a living, but ultimately it's decided on where I go, uh, you know, as far as the business of wrestling takes me and, uh, I'm, I never say never, right. You know, that's the thing. So, uh, I'm just going to go where the business takes me. I, I, again, I, I know 
people are getting tired of hearing that, but that's just the reality that I live in. And and what are your thoughts overall on NXT as as a product? Because I know for a while, at least at least for a while, there they seem to be targeting ROH and, and that market. Um, is it is it something you follow regularly? Uh, you know, I do keep up with it because I have friends that wrestle there. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be I'd be lying if I didn't say that NXT was a smart game plan. They you know they they they're taking some of the best wrestlers from all over the world you know, and, and put them on a, a bigger platform. Um, and you really can't fault WWE for doing that. I mean, if you want to keep guys, you got to put them under contract. That's just the reality of the business. Mm-hmm. And uh, some aren't able to do that. And when WWE snatches them up, you know, people are excited to see them there because some great wrestling is going on there. Right. So it, it, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, you can't deny that the wrestling, the women's wrestling is fantastic, you know? So, mm-hmm. It's it's something to watch for sure. Do you find it odd at all that um, that guys like you know you know you mentioned your friends over in NXT? You got guys like uh, Kevin Steen, Samoa Joe, uh, Prince, you know Finn Balor, Asuka. Yep. Uh, is it odd? Do you find it odd that they can't really go to the main roster directly anymore, and that you have to kind of you have to go through de- de- you know through NXT and uh, the de- development? I can't say developmental right now. I, I got gotcha. <laughs> you. I, you know it, it's not. You know some people may look at it that way. Uh, but you have to make sure because the Indies doesn't teach you everything you need. That's, that's the reality. Mm-hmm. You, uh, I mean, there's some guys, you know, the, they just, well, I watch it. I'm just like, ah, ugh, you know, on the independent scene, there's stuff that you need to learn for TV and NXT is the perfect place to learn. And, and you still have to learn to be on NXT. You can't just jump right in. Very few guys get the, get the opportunity to just jump right in. Finn, you know, Joe, um, you know, uh, Kevin, th- th- these guys are different stories. You know, mm. they've been doing this for a long time. You know, but some of the younger guys, I think it's a good idea that they get in there and get the experience of being on television, sticking to your times. There's a lot that goes in to to wrestling, and it's, and it's not just the wrestling. You know, there's camera angles and whatnot, and that's very important, especially you know when you're on television. Yeah, and, and I, I it's not. You, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't think a lot of people are disturbed. Ah, oh, he's so good in the ring. He should be on there right now. Well, it's not just about that. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, you have to understand where the hard cam is. How, you know how much time you have. Everything has to go into this, and it takes repetition to. Know exactly how to pin a guy, when to pin a guy, how much time you have, and what, when to look. You know when you're doing all this. Yeah. So, it it takes experience, and, and NXT is a great place to learn that. Yeah, and, and I know you often list uh, Rey Mysterio as a, as a dream match that you'd like to have. Are there any people in WWE that that you really look forward to facing one day in the ring? You know, there's. Um, I've been asked that question before about a lot of guys and. And at first, you know, I would I would pick off, you know, oh, yeah, man, hopefully Ray, you know, and, and I'm going to get to do that that match with him. But but then as I thought about it more, I was like, that's not even a question for me. It's a question for the fans of pro wrestling who they would want to see me wrestle. That's that's the question is who who would they like to see me wrestle, um, and we give them that experience, that match, and you know, because at the, at the end of the day. You know they're the ones that take care of AJ Styles, right? And uh, I know you got to get running uh, here in a minute, so I, I wanted to ask you one, one last question about TNA moving to Pop TV. Uh, what do you think they can do to kind of get back to uh, where they once were, or has it gone too far from that? I don't know, man. Um, I don't. Uh, it's hard to say uh, that. Have they gone too far? Have they gone far? You know. Uh, you know. Is the the thing that's going to separate them from everybody else going far enough, mm-hmm. you know, being something different, um, which is hard to do because you have to answer to a television station. Um, but I think that's the only way at this point. You got to give them the alternative, and if they can't do that, then we're in, you know they're in some real tr- trouble, you know. Uh, but you know, pop, you know, I don't know much about it, but it sounds like a great place to work. I hope that everything just explodes for them. I really do. That's you know, we all know that you know the more wrestling, it, it, the better business is for everybody. And you got friends. I, I know I've got friends that work at TNA, and I'd love to see them do 
well there. So I hope that they blow up. I hope they do something great. And I know you say never say never, but is that something you could see possibly uh, happening again? Is that another run in TNA? You said it. Never say never. <laughs> All right. Well, well. thanks again. Uh, it should be an amazing match with Nakamura this Monday, Wrestle Kingdom 10. I'm looking forward to it. And and congrats for having such a phenomenal, uh, you know, no pun intended, but a phenomenal mm. year this year and last and being regarded by many as the best wrestler right now in the business. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on the show. All right. Thank you.